All right, graphing rational functions. So this is the first one off the quiz. So we're just talking. We say we're going to have to collect some important information. One of the things was x-intercept. Like I said before, it doesn't matter what order you collect these in, but you have to collect this. So when you look for the x-intercept, right, remember that we consider it this way. We consider this to be f of x is equal to, I don't, yeah, exactly. P of x over Q of x. Uh, Ken likes G of x over H of x. Is that what you want? Ken, we'll use yours. So let's use this model, okay? So x-intercept set g of x to 0. Solve. Make sure what does not happen, though. Yeah, make sure that when you do that, it doesn't also set this to 0. Because if you set g of x to 0, and you plug in that value, and it also makes h of x go to 0, you have what? You have a removable discontinuity, right? But you have a hole in the function. So maybe that's what we should do first. We should look at this and be like, okay, you know what? Because look what does happen. Here, the x-intercept is 1, isn't it? But if you plug in 1 to here, 1 here and 1 here, you get 0 over 0. Right? That's an issue, isn't it? Okay, so let's leave that as a question mark for a second. Okay? And see what happens. So... In this case, I just want to re start refactoring this thing here. 1 minus x squared. See if you can see this. This thing is already factored here. This thing has this, this weird factor here. So I'm going to do it like this if you don't mind. I'm going to do it uh, 1 minus x and 1 plus x. Can you see that? Now this is where it gets weird. And it does because you're looking and you're like, these are not factors, are they? But with just a very small change, you can get a factor out, can't you? Here, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor out from this factor right here. I'm going to factor out negative 1. Take out negative 1. So we'll get x squared, I'm sorry, x minus 1 at the top. And then here we'll get negative x minus 1. And this is 1 plus x is the same as x plus 1, isn't it? Do we agree on that? Yeah, I'm just moving stuff around here. So from here, David, this is just what you were saying. Or actually, Michael, I don't remember which one of you it was. It was talking about a hole in the function. We're going to remove this hole from the function, but first we have to notate it. We say, you know what, there's a hole at x equals 1. Isn't that right? Then once you would say that, then you, can, then you can remove it. Joel, you said a removable discontinuity, so we're going to remove this. x minus 1 over x minus 1 is 1, isn't it? So here, this negative sign right here, it, this one right here, Joel, is this one. And we have 1 over x plus 1. Now, having said that, you said there's a, there's a hole at 1, at x is 1, right? If you try to find the, the y value by putting it back in here, you're going to get undefined again, aren't you? So you have to remove that discontinuity. Now take f of 1, and f of 1 is equal to what? Negative 1 half. And this is crucial. So we have this. Now do we have an x-intercept? 1 over the opposite of x plus 1. So now what's the x-intercept? Is there an x-intercept? No. None. Why do we, how do we know that? Because we set that equal to 0. 1 is never equal to 0, is it? What about a y-intercept? So here's the second thing I want to start collecting. Y-intercept. How do you find the y-intercept? It's this easy. Nathan? Sure, take f of 0. Into which function? Into the revised function, right? Which is 1 over opposite of 0 plus 1. Is that right? And that's what? So we get 0, negative 1, don't we? Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gather all this stuff up like this. Careful not to make it look looks like a donut. Sorry. Now what are we looking for? Important stuff. 
maybe of the vertical asymptote. What does the vertical asymptote tell you? Exactly, when is h of x equal to zero? Because if h of x goes to zero, that is if the denominator of our fraction goes to zero, what happens? We have, a, we have undefined, we have a vertical asymptote, we have a domain issue, don't we? All of those things that we talked about. So it's opposite of x plus one equals zero. X equals what? Don't get confused, just work on the inside. Isn't that right? What's bothering you? I know what's bothering you. What's bothering you, Strauss? Right. So look what happened if we did it this way. If we, you're going to get the same answer. I just want to show you, right? Right? If I distributed this through, then you'd get negative x is equal to 1. Well, x would be, okay? So if you see something like that, don't freak out about this. Remember, this is, what, this is the factor inside. It would have turned out the same either way. All right? So the vertical asymptote is x is equal to negative 1. Are we good there? So far, so good? Whoops, sorry. What's last? And again, it doesn't matter what order you get these pieces, but you got to have the pieces, right? So what's the last piece? Right, what's the horizontal asymptote? And we can use that theorem for it if you want to, right? For this one, it should be pretty damn easy, isn't it? Because we're going to have f of x is equal to the opposite of 1 over, is it x plus 1 here? Right? So as x gets really big, what are we going to have? Gonna, horizontal asymptote is zero, right? Because remember that horizontal asymptote says what's the end behavior. So what they're saying is as x approaches plus or minus infinity, does f of x approach some height value? And it does, doesn't it? All right, let's try to grab. Do we have the pieces? So here are the pieces, aren't they? Cartesian plane. Vertical asymptote anywhere? Where's the vertical asymptote? So this is what your graph would look like. You'd make a dotted line there, right? You'd label it x equals negative 1. We have any other information? Say that again? We have, oh, well, yeah, what's the y-intercept? Sure. 0, negative 1, is that right? So y-intercept, kind of going through your list, 0, negative 1. See, John, that's really smart the way you're doing it. Like, just go through your list as you built it. That's what I should have done, right? Something else you want to put up here we have? There's a hole where? One, negative one half. One, negative one half, if you don't mind. One, negative one half. I'm going to draw it like this. If you don't mind, draw a hole like that, right? Something else? Say that again? The horizontal asymptote, which is what? And I would label it just like this. Y is equal to zero, right? Now we can see what the function has to do here on this side, can't we? It's going gonna, it's gonna to run through here. It's got to hit this point right here, right? That's our hole. And it's going to approach like this, isn't it? So how do we figure out what happens on this side? Yeah, take a test value. What is... What's a possible test? What's not a possible test value? Negative 1 is not a possible test value. 0 is not a possible test value. We need an x value that's to the left of this, like, like negative 2. So I'm just going to take f of negative 2. And what is f of negative 2? We get negative 1 over opposite of negative 2 plus 1, which is what? Say it again is positive 1. So we get negative 2, 1. What does this thing have to do? Right, it's hyperbolic, right? It's going to do this, isn't it? Like that. Yep. Say that again? X is negative 2, isn't it? Oh, this shouldn't be negative up here. 
Oh, good. Thank you. You know what? I got a negative over a negative, so it still worked out. I knew what it was going to look like, so good. Good job. Thank you. We're good with this? So, before you start to make your before you start to make your graph, collect your information. Figure out the x-intercept by setting g of x to 0. If that value makes the whole thing go to 0 over 0, it's indeterminate form, and we need to do some factoring, don't we? Secondly, find the y-intercept. Y-intercept is just f of 0, isn't it? Assess the vertical asymptote by checking h of x is equal to 0 and solving. One thing at a time and get all this done. Got me? Okay.